All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores and the Washington Commanders have signed former Cowboys center Tyler Beardish. And I'm telling y'all, man, some people are a little sleep on this signing, man. I don't think y'all understand how big this was. That's why I predicted us to land him literally like earlier this morning slash late last night. I'm going to break down a lot of important stats that shows how much of an upgrade he is over who we've had here previously to start at center for us for a while now. And of course, we got to take a look at the entire offensive line. Is Tyler Beadish the last offensive lineman that we may sign in free agency? And of course, I know we're signing a couple of former Cowboys. I'm going to talk about Doran's Armstrong in an entirely separate video, but I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't have to worry about that and why this is actually a really good sign for us. But most importantly, we're going to talk about how good Tyler Beadish is and why this is just a great signing point blank period but before we dive into all of that make sure you still follow that like button still follow the subscription button and still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time i release the forms of an opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned because i'm keeping y'all updated on every single commander's move whether we re-sign somebody whether we sign somebody from an outside team like we just did here whether we go and make a trade whatever i'm keeping y'all updated on every little move and then also since we it's the legal tampering period we don't know the official numbers to a lot of these things so right now we're giving you like the estimate of what these guys have signed for but as of march 13th when we get the official numbers on these things i will do another update on that as well so stay tuned this is your one-stop shop for everything commanders let's go ahead and get to this video right now let's get it All right, so the Washington Commanders have signed Tyler Beadish, the center, to a three-year, $30 million deal. And I'm pretty sure that that is the max right there. Can't wait to get the real numbers so we can know the exact cap hits because this is literally the max. That's probably including incentives and all of that type of stuff. So his actual cap hit may be way less than that. We need to know the exact guarantees in this contract, but we may not exactly know those things until the actual start of the new league year, which is Wednesday, March 13th at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And again, I will update y'all on that when we get that information out there for everybody that we've signed, because we may sign a couple of guys over the next couple of days and then wednesday when we finally get the contract numbers i may do an entirely new video just to wrap up all of their cap hits and give y'all a cap space update so stay tuned for that but yeah let's move on to tyler b edition and yeah i can see why some people would say why a lot of people would say that lloyd cushionberry was arguably the best center available in this free agency cycle but boy our boy Tyler is arguably second at worst and most importantly way better than anybody we had at the very least last year and you can even start to go back a couple of years before you find a center that is as good as what we have potentially in Tyler Beadish right now man I mean if you're in the pro football focus grades he was the 14th highest graded center according to pro football focus with a 69.2 grade and even though I feel like he is slightly better than just 14th best center in the nfl even if he literally is the 14th best center in the nfl i'm very happy with that because that's better than anything we've gotten anytime recently let's take a look at some stats man let's really dive into this so this guy was 16th in snaps at center last year but yet he only had three penalties against him he only missed two games over the last three years and he's only 26 years old so this is a guy with some potential that we haven't even necessarily reached yet. He's still really young and we could basically expect for him to only get better with time and his best days are ahead of him. That's the theme with both of these signings and Tyler B. Edition, Dorrance Armstrong. And we'll talk about Dorrance Armstrong in an entirely different video, like I already said. But going back to Tyler, since 2022 with 1,299 pass blocking snaps, only 50 quarterback pressures allowed and only four sacks allowed in two seasons. Let's dive even deeper. Tyler Beadish allowed pressures on 4.8% of his pass blocks last season. That's fourth lowest among all NFL centers. The only people ahead of him are Creed Humphrey, Josh Myers, and Ryan Kelly. That's it. Tyler Beadish is fourth when you're looking at pressure rate allowed. So 
when we're talking about on a per snap basis, Tyler Biadish is technically the fourth best pass blocking center in the NFL. And also to add to that, the commanders allowed a 7.5 pressure rate in 2023, the sixth highest in the NFL. So we're going from the sixth highest pressure rate allowed by centers last year to the fourth lowest pressure rate allowed by centers last year i mean that's a huge day and night difference type thing right there that's very big for us man and also he saved two cowboys turnovers last year just from pure motor and playing until the whistle like this is a guy that's not lazy he's giving you everything he has every snap again until the whistle is blown man and this signing just seemed destined this is like the type of guy that Dan Quinn would want on this team. Like, literally go look it up, man. This guy saved two fumbles, two turnovers, just by simply playing until the whistle blew and, like, was able to dive on them from, like, a running back fumbling the ball or whatever, man. And, boy, even though Antonio Gibson's leaving the Patriots, a guy like that would have been a big help for the Antonio Gibson, who just seemed to fumble at the worst times. And it seemed like nobody was ever willing or able to be able to fall on the ball for us to protect us from the bad Antonio Gibson play. Now we have the guy that's going to do that. But sadly, my dog Antonio Gibson is leaving for the Patriots. I'm going to talk about that a little bit at the end of the video. But... I'm saying this is a huge sign, and especially with us potentially bringing in a rookie quarterback with the second overall pick. That looks like that's destined to happen. We can argue about whether it's Drake May or Jaden Daniels at this point, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to happen. And having an inexperienced center with an inexperienced quarterback literally sounds like a recipe for disaster, y'all. Like, if we had an established quarterback, like a veteran quarterback, then maybe I wouldn't mind hoping that somebody already on the roster, like a Ricky Strongberg, could figure it out while on the job type of situation. Or maybe you draft somebody like a Cedric Van Pran in the third round, or maybe you, you're willing to take Jackson Powers in the late first or something like that. But a veteran center, especially while the center market is so low and basically on sale right now these guys should be getting paid more money than they're actually getting just because the center market is devalued not as bad as safety but still pretty bad it makes too much sense to pair a guy like tyler beadish with a young inexperienced quarterback a guy like tyler can help for example a guy like Jaden daniels or drake may with changing the protections at the line and all of those difficult nuanced parts of being a quarterback that a lot of rookie quarterbacks no matter how talented no matter how far they can throw a ball no matter how fast they can run or whatever they struggle with these things early on in their careers and tyler helps mitigate a lot of that potential risk of signing well basically drafting a rookie quarterback and bringing him here especially if you want him to start early like week one Without a guy like Tyler, if we had Ricky Strongberg projected to be our starting center, I would almost give it no shot that Jaden Daniels or Drake May starts week one. But Tyler allows you to do that because he can make up for a lot of the potential mistakes that they would make. And he can basically handle that part of the job for them until they're ready to take it over. As far as like IDing potential blitzers. Oh, this guy looks like he may be coming in the A gap. Maybe we need to shift the line this way. There's that edge rusher over there or that linebacker looking like he's trying to take a wide angle on you. Maybe we should shift the line that way. Or maybe it looks like it's going to be a potentially like a cover zero type of blitz. And we need to, okay, you need to handle that guy. You need to handle that guy. Running back, maybe you need to worry about this guy because he may be coming from there. Those are things that while a rookie quarterback is trying to figure out what's going on with coverages, that's kind of like not necessarily the last thing in their list of things. Things that they're trying to figure out pre-snap but that's just one thing if you take it off of their plate it allows them to be able to diagnose and focus on a lot of the other things especially coverage wise where they're going to throw the ball and focus on that more and not have to worry about everything tyler can just keep that on his plate until a guy like Jaden daniels or drake may is ready to take that over as well i don't think y'all understand how monumental this signing is especially if you want to take quarterback second overall this signing is probably going to be your favorite signing out of this entire free agency period no matter who we get now of course i would love to also go get like a tyron smith at left tackle but this center signing helps out your rookie quarterback so much beyond what y'all can even imagine i don't even think i did a great job breaking it all the way down just know this signing is big time for a rookie quarterback and to me overall this is like an a signing i mean i'm that high on him again the only way you could get to an a plus is maybe lloyd cushionberry because i think he's just that elite but i think tyler is right behind him in second place and on top of bringing in an inexperienced quarterback so signing a guy like tyler helps with that a lot but also now you don't even have to think about the center position for a few years man 
I mean, if you want to draft one late round, cool, but no more commanders drafting a center in the second or third round mock drafts type of things. Because before we signed Tyler, those projections did make a lot of sense. I mean, but Tyler's 26 years old. This is our center of the future, hopefully. We only signed him to a three-year deal. Adam Peters is famous for not giving really long-term deals like four or five years. That's just not his thing. But regardless, I expect Tyler Biadish to hopefully be our starting center of the future. Like, years from now, we're going to the Super Bowl. That's our starting center right there. And possibly even a Pro Bowl level center. Because again, he's only 26 years old. The best of his work is yet to come, I believe. I feel like he's only getting better and better and better. He's shown that with the Cowboys. He's gotten better and better each season. And this past 2023 season was literally the best season of his career so far. So I'm really excited for him. I'm not going to lie. And now offensive lines wise, we still have to figure out a few things. We still got to figure out left tackle. Of course, like I said, Tyron Smith is my favorite option there. And if he were to end up signing elsewhere, then we could start to dive deeper. I could do a deeper breakdown into who I prefer now. But I'm just putting all of my eggs in one basket and hoping that we end up with Tyron Smith, even though we probably may still draft a guy um, earlier in the draft than people probably expect, even if we were to sign a Tyron Smith. And then there's still left guard. And there's a few guys out there that will be pretty solid there. Um, so Robert Hunt, who was my favorite option, already just went to the Panthers for ridiculous money. And I don't think Adam Peters and the guys are willing to give him that much. So I'm not surprised that he didn't come here. And then I'm still questioning right tackle over there with Andrew Wiley. I'm not going to lie. I'm squinting at him. Like, I'm still, I don't know about you, man. I don't know. I'm keeping my eye on you. But we don't necessarily have to solve all of these in free agency. We can get serious about one or more of these weaknesses on our offensive line in the draft if that's what it takes but center and right guard we are super good those are your starting centers and right guards of the future and we may want to go ahead and wrap up samuel cosme long term so that we don't have to worry about center and right guard at the very least for the next few years let's go ahead and get busy rookie quarterback knows who those guys are going to be but we do still have to figure out the rest of the offensive line i will argue and if you don't want to believe me about tyler be this just watch some commanders versus cowboys games from last year and look how how tyler was putting Deron Payne in a box a lot of the time man neither Deron Payne nor Jonathan Allen had a single sack against Dallas because of Tyler and we remember we played them twice a year now granted Jonathan Allen wasn't there for the final Dallas game but we play the Cowboys twice a year and Tyler didn't allow a single sack in either of those games he's big time man and I know before we get up out of here, I know some of y'all are concerned with us signing so many former Cowboys for two reasons. First of all, a lot of y'all just don't like signing former Cowboys, period. You feel like it's a jinx or whatever. And then number two, a lot of people are definitely afraid of Dan Quinn doing with the Cowboys what Ron Rivera did with the Panthers, which is bringing over a bunch of his former team's players. But this, in my opinion, is completely different. These guys are actually really good young and have their best days ahead of them type of guys in my opinion like with ceilings that we haven't even scratched yet that we haven't even reached these are not the david mayos and trey turners in my opinion these people are guys that other teams also wanted as well but dan quinn was able to help us with his familiarity recruit them here is what i believe we didn't just go get these guys. I feel like we won these guys off the market. Other teams were definitely interested in Tyler Biadish and Dorrance Armstrong, and I'm, I'm assumed to believe. And plus, remember, don't nothing happen, move, blink, or breathe without Adam Peters saying so over here. So yeah, maybe Dan Quinn helped recruit him, but Adam Peters also wanted these guys if we signed them. This is the Adam Peters show. I don't think y'all understand. Eugene Shin helps a lot on the analytics side as well. But this is the Adam Peters show. Don't nothing go without him saying it goes. And I also think it's pretty cool and noteworthy that Adam Peters trusts Dan Quinn this much to allow him to bring over. I mean, Adam Peters' first three signings, two of them are former Cowboys Dan Quinn guys. One was basically a Cliff Kingsbury signing and Zach Ertz. The other two are arguably Dan Quinn guys just coming, even though Dan Quinn is on the defensive side of the ball. So it's not like he can really super vouch for these guys. But at the end of the day, man, that's really cool. I think that's a good sign that Adam Peters trusts Dan Quinn that much already. For two out of his first three signings since becoming the Washington Commanders general manager have been ex-Cowboys. Also, shouts out to Chad Forrest for pointing this out. I completely agree. 
Commander Sign and Tyler Beard just tells you they do not view 2023 third round pick Ricky Strongberg as a viable starter at the position. I hope none of y'all did, especially immediately week one. Maybe one day he will be, but I didn't see him looking good enough before he got hurt to look like a starting center projected to be our guy week one. I mean, maybe he just has this immense growth and development in training camp before week one happens but i just i wouldn't put all of my eggs into the ricky strongberg basket at all i, I just honestly wouldn't and then on top of that man he's coming off of ir so who knows how healthy he even is yet so, continuing with Chad Forbes' tweet, not ideal to miss on a premium pick top three rounds at a non-premium position. And I completely agree, but I even acknowledge the fact that even though I do like Ricky Strongberg, I did say that he was a reach in the third round, but luckily, the guys that were making decisions like that, that were drafting like that, are no longer here. I mean, Martin Mayhew's still kind of here, but he's here in an advisory role, and that's it. This is the Adam Peters Show, and if anything, Eugene Shin, Dan Quinn, and maybe even Joe Wood Jr. and Cliff Kingsbury have more say than a martin may you have and thank goodness that he moves so far down the pecking order also shouts out to michael gelkin because he brought up a great point this is the third straight year the cowboys have lost a starting caliber interior offensive lineman in free agency they lost guard slash center connor williams in 2022 to the dolphins they lost guard slash center connor mcgovern in 2023 to the bills and now center tyler be dish to the commanders in 2024 i do feel sorry for them a little bit but they are cowboys so i you know not much i don't, I don't have too much sympathy for those guys over there and you know the Cowboys fans don't like what's going on because they're already counting comp picks right now, today. The beginning of free agency, the legal tampering period, already counting their comp picks for the guys that they're losing, including Tony Pollard and maybe even potentially Tyron Smith. And of course, who we're talking about today, the star of this show, Tyler Beadish, man. And then before we get up out of here as well, man, I feel like I got to say my goodbyes to Antonio Gibson. I know a lot of y'all weren't big Antonio Gibson fans, and I know some of y'all are getting in the comment section and be like, good riddance, and he's trash. But I was really excited about seeing what he could do in this Cliff Kingsbury offense, but he's gone to the Patriots, so I wanted to go ahead and announce that and let y'all know that. I am a little sad, but I'm also not worried at all because I feel like we can sign another potentially really cheap running back, probably cheaper than what Antonio Gibson got for the Patriots. And I'm almost sure we were going to draft a running back somewhere in the middle of the draft, regardless of whether we brought Antonio Gibson back or not. No matter what we do in free agency, we're drafting a running back somewhere like maybe between round four, five, and six somewhere. Maybe even third round, because that's that three through six is like the sweet spot for running backs where you can get a really good top three draft class running back, maybe even as late as the third or fourth round. And I'm pretty sure Cliff Kingsbury would like to draft, groom, and develop his own guy. So... Antonio Gibson leaving makes a lot of sense. I never thought it was very likely that we bring him back. I was just hoping that we would. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button. Stiff arm the subscription button. Stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release a formative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned because I'm keeping y'all updated on every move that the commanders make whenever but especially like these next few days while free agency is first kicking off so stay tuned for that and again i will update y'all on the exact money and details of the tyler be dish contract how much of a cap hit he actually is and i will give y'all an overall cap space update once we hit the actual start of the new league year which is technically the start of free agency which is wednesday march 13th at 4 p.m eastern time so stay tuned for that as well i'm about to go ahead and start working on this Dorrance armstrong video immediately to get that out to y'all and hey man i really appreciate y'all make sure i leave a like on the way out let me get back to this film study and let me go ahead and get to this Dorrance armstrong video catch y'all later i'm out